Hello and welcome to Business Reporter's UK 2030 campaign. I'm Alastair Greener. The UK is very proud of its progress in harvesting and using renewable energy. In 2017, more power came from green resources than from fossils. But we're still waiting for the breakthrough of renewables. Why is this? Because of volatility. Supply is intermittent. We've invited Dr. Daniel Gladwin from the Centre of Research into Electrical Energy and Storage and Applications at Sheffield University to explore opportunities and to overcome the volatility problem. Good morning. Good morning. Why isn't all our electricity coming from renewable energy sources? We need to ensure that our end users have constant supply. We don't want them to have to switch off their devices or businesses turn off their production lines. Renewable energy uh, generators uh, provide a power that's variable. We can generally predict that power. We know if it's the sunlight that the solar panels will have a power output, but you know, a cloud going over will vary the output power. So we need to ensure that the power given to, to our supply network is constant and renewable energy can cause problems with that. We talked there about volatility of supply. I mean, that's a major disadvantage for renewable versus fossil. Can you explain a bit more about why that is and how that works? The demand and supply and network needs to always be balanced. If we don't balance this out, it means that uh, the power quality isn't as good. So frequency excursions, voltage variation. This means that the end user, uh, their appliances may not work or could even, even catch fire. So we need to ensure this is balanced out. We can do this through energy storage. Energy storage can fill these gaps very quickly, which means that we can generate a, a very stable frequency, a nice voltage, which means the end user has a very good supply of power. At the moment, how is this storage obtained? How do we do it at the moment? <clears throat> a very promising technology for storage is battery energy storage. Currently in the UK, we have uh, pumped hydro, we in Oregon, Wales. We pump the water up to store the energy and release the water to get the power back out. With other technologies available, we've got things like thermal, we've got compressed gas. But battery energy storage is a, a great technology in that it can store uh, power very, very quickly. We, we can respond to a response very quickly, but also you can scale it to store a very significant amount of energy. In an ideal world, how can these batteries be integrated into the existing energy grid? In an ideal world, we want these batteries to be installed in a way they can provide a coordinated response. What I mean by this is that the batteries can be physically separated into small units, but when there's a requirement for power, that they all respond at the same time and with the same delivery speed. We want to create this balance of demand supply across the network providing the energy storage response at the right time, but also perhaps controlling our generators and controlling how our end users are using our power. For example, it'd be great if we could actually uh, control the amount of power you use in your home at any given time to help balance out this demand supply. So that's the ideal world. How far are we away from that today? Today, at the very early stages of installing a smart grid, we need to be able to control the end users, we need to control our generation. It means we need to be able to monitor all the different parts of our network. The batteries we're installing need to be installed in a way that can communicate and be coordinated. And we need to have a very good understanding of how the network is currently operated. Now, you're running lots of research on this topic and have come up with a few strong solutions. Our colleagues have visited you on location, so let's take a look at how your innovation is working in practice. I'm going to show you how the battery operates. On the screen here, I have two charts. There's a big increase in frequency here, which means there's too much power on the grid. Our battery now takes that power off the grid to rebalance those two demand and supply. The frequency drops down below 50 hertz, and you can see our battery responds again, providing power to the grid to keep it in balance. As soon as this frequency changes, the battery reacts straight away. This battery system is programmed to react in less than 20 milliseconds. On this screen here, <clears throat> we have all the information coming from the battery cells in the other cabin. We're seeing how the batteries are changing over time and how much power each cell is providing. Those 21,000 cells have got to operate in the same manner. We can do prognostics with this system. We can look at how this battery can provide different services in the future and what that means to the lifetime of the cells. An important part of these battery systems 
is generating the revenue for the asset owner. This chart on, on the screen here shows uh, the prices on the electricity market at any given time. The battery could provide uh, a fringe response service, as we've previously shown, or opt out of that and instead trade on this electricity market. We can use our diagnostics and prognostic algorithms to optimize how you can generate revenue and maximize profits for your battery system whilst minimizing the degradation to your batteries. Now you're doing a lot of work into battery research at the University of Sheffield. Tell me a little bit more about that and what the trends are in terms of what you're learning. So in 2013, uh, we received funding to install uh, a new a novel type of battery. It's a lithium titanate battery. It's uh, two megawatts in power and can store one megawatt hour of energy. So it could probably provide about uh, 3,000 homes of power for, for 30 minutes. This battery is, was the latest technology in terms of being safe, delivering high amounts of power. And with this, we've been able to really look at how the cells work. In collaboration with industry, we brought new technologies in and looked at how we can uh, scale this technology down or up. And actually, we've now got to the point where uh, we are looking and helping our collaborating partners install systems at probably 50 times capacity. We actually formed a new Centre of Excellence at the University of Sheffield called the Centre for Research into Energy Storage and its Applications. This group of 15 researchers work day in, day out to look at how to advance the technology and install these batteries and use them in the best way. We call it looking at the diagnostics and prognostics of battery systems. That is how you understand how the battery is currently working, what it's capable of doing, but also in the future, if I did something different, how long would that battery last? You talked about Crease at that. So what's the future going to hold? Looking at the research that you've been doing, if we look towards the future, what are we looking at when it comes to battery storage? So in Crease, we're concentrating on two key areas. The first is the battery technologies themselves. So we're working with partners, both in academia and industry, looking at new chemistries and new materials to make cells that uh, can store more energy and provide more power. We're then putting these uh, cells and scaling them up into larger systems. With our own facilities and our big battery, we can take the real world data and apply those to these new technologies that are emerging. Our second area of research is looking at competing story technologies or technologies that can, that can be complementary to batteries. A great example is that Creaser are currently installing Europe's largest flywheel system. Um, we're installing our big facility where the battery is. And you know, with flywheels, they're a great system for, for storing energy in terms of mechanical energy. So you put energy into the flywheel, it'll spin up a, a carbon tube, and that stores your energy as a spinning mass. You then can take the energy out and it'll slow down. It's a very fast system. Yeah, it's very mechanical, there's no, there's no chemistry to start to degrade. Now that's a, a fast system, provides lots of power, but in terms of energy, it's not as good as the batteries. So what we're trying to do is say, well, we've got these batteries that can store lots of energy, we've got these flywheels with lots of power, we combine the two together to create a hybrid system which can really slot into our energy network and provide the storage requirements that we need today and in the future. Which is exactly what we want. And it sounds like it's going to be a very exciting world in the future where we're going to get this sustainable energy. But more importantly, we're going to be able to store it. So it's been fascinating finding out more. Dr. Dan Gladwin from the University of Sheffield. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.